Welcome back, Warriors. Kwe Tanse Sego Ani Buju. Kwe Nin Deluizi Pampometer, and I am the host of this show, The Warrior Life. This podcast is a show about living the warrior life, a lifestyle that focuses on decolonizing our minds, bodies, and spirits, while at the same time revitalizing our cultures, traditions, practices, and governments. It's also about asserting, living, and defending our sovereignty all over Turtle Island. And we defend our sovereignty in many different ways. It could be on the ground, protecting our lands and waters. It could be in our communities, teaching languages and cultures, or engaging in some of our traditional sports, like lacrosse, the creator's game. And today I am super pumped to have with us actual lacrosse players from the one and only Iroquois Nationals lacrosse team. I mean, it's Hard to believe, I'm such a huge fan. They are five times silver medalist, two times bronze medalist, and they truly represent us as native peoples all over Turtle Island and all over the world. Welcome to the podcast, Randy, Jeremy, and Brendan. Thanks for having hey, us. Thanks for having me. Yep, thanks for having us. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I know that you're all busy and you're all preparing. Um, so I'm wondering, Randy, uh, Randy Stotts, if you can maybe start and introduce yourself, your background, your nation. Yeah. Um, as you, I'm Randy Stotts. I grew up in Six Nations, Ontario. Um, I'm Mohawk from the uh, Turtle Clan. Um, I guess I'll start, I'll start with lacrosse. Yeah, I started playing lacrosse at a young age. Uh, I think I was three and, you know, I've, I've been playing ever since. So uh, it's been a big part of my life and it, it's allowed me to do some things that um, I always dreamed of doing and uh, continue to do. So that's a little bit about me and um, yeah. That's awesome. Well, it's good to know you're from Six Nations. I'm not that far away from you. Um, so how about you, Brendan Bomberry? Yeah, my name is Brendan Bombery. I'm also from Six Nations of the Grand River. Um, I'm Mohawk Nation uh, from Turner Clan as well. Uh, my native name is Gahumagayo, uh, which means old boat. Um, you know, like Randy said, I started playing lacrosse when I was three years old. I think, um, you know, most kids from our reservation, they start that young. And, you know, I think with a lot of sports, you kids grow up and they want to be professional athletes. And I think most of us have grown up to, you know, want to play for the Iroquois Nationals and so you know to be a part of this team and to be a part of this change is you know it's really a dream come true and such an honor and you know I, I look forward to it every single day. That's that's incredible to to start a sport at three years old I mean that's like a lifelong commitment um, and how about you Jeremy Thompson? Um, now I scan up uh, hello everyone um, my name is Jeremy Thompson my uh, given Traditional name is uh, which means the sun is leaning. Um, from the Onondaga Nation in upstate New York, um, you know, just like just to kind of piggyback off the rest of the Randy and uh, Bomber, um, lacrosse has, um, you know, been a gift to us and it's been, it's kind of for us, been an opportunity for us to make a career out of ourselves um, for what we do today. You know, obviously, play professional lacrosse and but on the other side of that, you know, lacrosse has always been, um, you know, culture standpoint, um, a, tradition, a tradition behind um, something that we um, use as a medicine. Uh, and, you know, for me, back in my hometown, we, we do that every springtime. They have a medicine game for lacrosse players. And it's basically, in a nutshell, a reminder to remind the players of why this game was sent down here. And, and basically, this game was sent down to um, basically go out and put your best effort forth, um, you know, encourage people around you, and most importantly, you know, go out there and have fun. And, um, you know, for me, lacrosse has been a vehicle for me to, um, you know, obviously, um, as you know, with a lot of Native American communities, um, education isn't the number one priority, but I can kind of see that um, in today's society, um, those tables have started to turn now. So for me, um, that's where lacrosse, it came from this culture standpoint um, to like, playing it as a sport and then it becoming realizing that it was a vehicle for me to get an education to go out and explore the world and, and obviously now I've um, had the opportunity to travel about and um, you know play professional lacrosse and it's something that I feel fortunate enough um, because I've had lots of experiences through to the game of lacrosse and met lots of people so um, yeah I can't say I can't I can't speak enough on what lacrosse has done for me and 
you know, every four years we have the opportunity to come together as nations, as with the Iroquois Nationals. And um, it, it's an honor. It's an honor. It's something special that we hold near and dear because of um, what our, our people um, are all about and, and especially what we're fighting for and, and what the hurdles that we've had to overcome. And it's been, it's been, and that, to me, uh, I just reflect back that that just goes to show that's, that's life and that things happen like that. And it's all about, um, how you overcome those obstacles and you know we're, we're doing a pretty good job you know of that and, and we're learning we're learning that we have a voice and that we're special each individual every one of us and that and that that voice needs to be heard and to be honored um, so yeah thanks again no I mean this is like it's so incredible and it's so different from other sports in the sense that it actually comes from your own culture and you know i've heard all different haudenosaunee communities they have this huge pride in the game of lacrosse and it's such a part of their identity and you know it's often referred to as the creator's game can one of you or you know several of you talk about what does that mean that it's that it's you know often referred to as the creator's game go ahead jer um yeah i'll, I'll start this off and then randy and bomber just just yeah. piggyback off and just whatever comes to mind but um essentially you know i mentioned i mentioned in the beginning um you know obviously we we as religions as a cultural way of life whatever you want to call it um we have a creator slash god wherever you believe in and essentially um there's a couple different uh, views of um, why this game was brought down here um, to our people. Um, there's many different stories from nation to nation, but um, the story that I know is that the creator um, uh, used this game as a medicine to, to entertain, uh, to bring the community together, um, bring nations together. And obviously, if you read in the history books, um, it was also used for uh, to settle major war disputes be between between different communities or different nations. If, if they couldn't decide on something, they would settle it with a game of lacrosse because lacrosse, um, for us, um, across the across any country, there was many different forms of lacrosse. So obviously we all had something in common. So for us to come together, we would settle it with a game of lacrosse with, with, with something that we knew, which we all knew about and we could we all knew how to do. Um, but kind of going back to the story of um, uh, how I know the story of why right from the beginning of the right, right beginning of time when the creator had sent this game down was um, bringing, the, bringing the community together. It's almost kind of like the renewal of when things go back to sleep again in the winter time, when that winter um, season comes, um, things start to go into hibernation and the plants, you know, some of the animals start to go back. And it's almost like in the springtime when that, when that, um, when that idea of, you know, you start to see green that comes again, you know, the flowers start to bud again in the trees. Um, it's the same, same concept, like I mentioned earlier, lacrosse um, was, was a reminder of uh, why this game was sent down here to, to the people. And one of the ways that we do it back in our community, we gather um, to, if someone that might be mentally ill or emotionally down, it's, it's, it could come through like a fortune telling uh, that someone might need a lacrosse game done. Uh, but in this instance, we w when we come together in the community in the springtime, it's just it's a renewal to bring the community again to remind the players why we play this game. And it's really the way I understand it. It's it's understood that um, that there's a fire that's made. Um, there's a there's a, um, a sacred tobacco that we use that's um, essentially our connection to the Creator. Up up. So obviously there's a there's there's some speaking that goes on, and that's being told before the game. Before starts um you know so so and the way i understand that is that there's a direct communication to letting all the life know around us to come and almost kind of like bring it year to bring this to your attention and bring and come to this field right now and bring your spirits to this to this field and what's going on right now and that's the way i've always kind of understood it and the creator's three ideas behind that was that we would you know go out put your best effort out uh, no matter what happens, win or lose, it wasn't about the loss. It's about the idea of going out there and creating this, this sense of energy within yourself uh, for a much uh, higher purpose, which it could be for that person that might be mostly down or ill, uh, to lift them up in, in, in those spirits. Um, so, so for me, 
um, you know, that mentality is so important when it comes to it is because, um, you know, like in the springtime, we use our wooden traditional lacrosse sticks um, in that game. And, you know, you might get hit on the head or an arm and, and it obviously hurts, but it's, um, it, it comes down to like, what your reaction is going to be and how you're going to push forward and kind of reevaluating yourself and thinking, you know, how am I going to overcome this? And what am I really here for? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And I think going off that, um, you know, although the game that we play now has changed so much and it's much more commercialized, I think that, you know, we still carry that, that traditional meaning in our mind we're playing, you know, we, we carry on, we know that, you know, we're playing for, like Jeremy said, for a much higher purpose, you know, to entertain our creator, our families and the fans. And, you know, that, that's medicine right there. You know, it, although we, we still do our traditional medicine games, you know, and we, we, we continue that, that mindset going into, you know, a regular game where, you know, obviously wins and losses matter, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it's more about, you know, how you play the game. You play with the heart, you play it with passion, you play it, you know, as hard as you can. And those are things that, you know, people, you know, stick onto and they like to see. And, you know, that's for, for all of us, you know, that's medicine right there as well. For me, I think, you know, just spinning off Bomber here, um, if you come to a game uh, on the reserve uh, and you, you see a bunch of different variety of people, you know, old, young, you know, some sick, some healthy, um, and – it's a very emotional game and you can see, you know, if they're cheering for the hometown team that they're, they're excited when a big hit happens or they're happy when a goal is scored or they're um, upset if a call isn't made, you know? So I think, you know, the game brings a, a bunch of different emotions to people um, and it allows them to kind of be connected um, to it through us in a way. And, you know, one of the things that we, we talk about um, is playing with a clear mind and, and, and a positivity with it, and which basically means to me, uh, I know it means uh, different things to different people, but to me, it's uh, there's a lot of different emotions that go on in a game and you can get negative or, 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 or act out pretty quickly and, and to keep that positive mind like Jeremy was talking about and, and to keep a level head and understand the the bigger purpose behind it is um, is, is, is what we uh, are trying to accomplish. So it's really, you know, in addition to being directly connected to your culture, it also includes all of these teachings that you can use, obviously, in your everyday life in terms of, you know, um, all of that, living in a good way and trying your hardest and, and how you push forward through difficulties and um, and clearly, in, in all of your different nations, people are engaged in lacrosse in different ways, whether they're actually players or they're there supporting it or, you know, they're fundraising for it. And you see, I mean, the cutest thing is to see lots of little kids playing lacrosse. Um, were all of your families really involved in lacrosse? Like, was that your main motivator for getting into lacrosse at such young ages? Uh, yeah. For me, I think, you know, I grew up watching my uncles and cousins play, you know, for our local junior A team. And that's something I always wanted to do. And the, the, I, the biggest thing I noticed with this whole COVID thing is, you know, my family is, for the, the start of it, was completely lost. You know, everything was revolved around, you know, the next game, the next practice. But we didn't have that. So it was kind of weird to, you know, live life not knowing. You know, that's how we kind of tell, tell, like knew what day it was. You know, we knew. You know, Six Nations Arrows play on Sunday nights. The Six Nations Chiefs play on Tuesday. Six Nations Junior B Rebels play on Friday. And that's kind of how you knew the days. And that's how you went about your week. And that's something to always look forward to. And I think that, you know, that was something that we really noticed in this whole time. And that's been difficult. And we're looking to get back to that as soon as possible. For me, I, yeah, I mean, I think we're all kind of in the same boat. You know, my dad played, uh, my uncles played, my cousins played. So it's always been around me. Um, and, and if you drive around here, you know, you'll see kids in the backyard shooting around. So, I mean, you're, you're very susceptible to, to seeing the game. And um, it, it's, it's pretty cool to me to see, you know, generation after generation after generation for, for hundreds, of, for decades and, and hundreds of years. And it's still getting passed down. 
and, and it's still strong. And, and that's something that, that, that amazes me. And um, it, it's very cool. Yeah, so um, like, like everyone's talking about, um, lacrosse is kind of, you know, passed down. It's almost kind of like, uh, I, I, as you guys were talking, I thought about an interesting thing that I knew about that um, when we have a special day and one of our, and all of our ceremonies, we have four, we have lots of ceremonies throughout the year. And we have a special day that we set aside for the, the children, for, their, to, for them to get their traditional given name. And in that process, when that chief or that faith keeper gives that child um, that naming process and is going through that name process, it's sitting that it's sitting the speaking in a speech that maybe this kid is going to become um, a good speaker, maybe he's going to be a good dancer or a good singer. And one of the last few things, uh, last things that are said is that maybe he's going to be a good crafty. He's going to he's going to craft this game of lacrosse. He's going to be good at it. He's going to be able to do special things with it. So, right, as you can kind of see, lacrosse is almost kind of like it's as a traditional standpoint, cultural, spirituality, I guess you want to say it, it's, it's ingrained right in us. And it, it just happened to be that lacrosse has become a sport for us to kind of take it um, um, to use as a career. But we've always kind of carried those, um, those values, those customs and those values with us. And I think that's what, I think that's what we're seeing here. Um, a, a, a easy line to see that that this everything that we believe in and everything that we um, we surround ourselves around through ceremony and culture you can you can really see how things are interwoven interconnected and I'm I'm learning that now because I'm 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 at a point in my life right now where I'm I'm um, I, I've I've kind of almost kinda, we've all kind of became professional lacrosse players and we obviously evolve into certain parts, but it almost kind of seems like I've, I've, um, I've mastered or pretty close to mastering the game of lacrosse. So it's like now I've, I'm more focused on obviously evolving into what are they, what are they saying in our language and culture? And that kind of takes me to the original story of this game and how it was the way I understood it. And how, like I said, many, there's many, um, views and how this story was told from nation to nation but the way i understand it is that this game was was played up in the sky world up in the heavens before it was sent down here on earth and and, and to be honest with everything what the way we view things as a culture is what's going on down here is it was going on up there in the heavens and to me i understand that this game has well, before it was played here it was played um between these animals the and and how these how these animals played this game was it was split up between two teams between the winged and and um the four-legged the, the ground animals and you had all these different animals such as the bear and you think about the bear he might not be the quickest he might he you could you would obviously think that he's quick and good with his hands um look if you think about what a bear special he's good at getting fish out of, out of the water um, you look at an eagle, he's unique with his eyes, can oversee view, views of, 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 of everything. And you translate into the game of lacrosse, you have all these, to me, it's just funny as I kind of look back and reflect, that's how the game of lacrosse is kind of still being um, kind of played. It's unique to me to see that you have not one player can do the same as what the other players did. And, and that's how I kind of conclude it back to, I kind of, conclude everything back to that original story because you have the turtle that could withstand hard blows or um, the deer, you know, he's quick on his feet. So as you could see, you would ultimately think back to like, man, all these animals had a, a specialty. They brought, they brought their special, what they were unique at, unique at to this game. And they made it, it's essentially all these energies that they brought to this game and brought it and put it out on the field or floor, whatever you want to call it. And I can still see that today in today's society and this sport that we play is transcending into something that, um, that I, I see from those original teachings. Um, so, yeah. Well, I mean, clearly the game, not only is it so 
powerful in its teachings and its origins and important to your culture, but it's also now come to be so important and a sense of pride for different nations all over Turtle Island in Canada and the US that it's like, a, it's considered like the native sport. And so First Nations all over and different uh, Native Americans all over want to also play this sport, to be attached to something that's so important. I mean, how does that make you all feel? You know, like this I think, I I think um, it, it's it's so amazing to me because lacrosse isn't where it needs to be. Like every sport has their energy, it has their 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 importance of where what what the important object is of the game. You know, in basketball is the basketball, and football is the football. But obviously, for me, and I don't know what the history is behind how football was created or how basketball was created or soccer. But I do know about what lacrosse from the origins of it. And to me, I can't wait until I see that one day where, where it's going to take it to where it needs to be um, to give it the limelight that, you know, professional basketball, the NBA, uh, that NHL, um, because I think that's unique. I think that's unique to the world to know this. And to me, you know, I hope to see that. And that's my goal in life is to kind of just bring that to light and to be a part of that. I, I'm just happy to do my part and to help the next guy beside me prosper, bloom, or whatever, whatever the case may be, and to just share my experiences with them. Um, so that way they can see, they obviously see things different than I would, or they, it goes back to that original story. I always go back to it because everyone has a uniqueness. You know, everyone's sent here for many different reasons. It's, it's up to you as an individual to find that within yourself to what, what are you special at? What, what are you unique at? And to me, I always go back to that because um, I think this is what this is all about, bringing in, um, you know, bring in how do we educate nine point whatever billion people there in the world? And to me, it's I think that's one way to do it through peace, love, friendship, and um, and so forth. And I think that's what it is for me, and and kind of what gives me the drive and passion for it uh, to just keep pushing forward. And obviously, we have lots of hurdles, and sometimes we want to give up, but it's just like no, it's no, I'm doing the right thing, you know. So. I think, you know, when we, when we talk about other nations and, and other tribes and, and representing them, the first thing I think about is the Iroquois Nationals. And uh, we, we've been a part of it for uh, quite some time now, and I've been a part of different things where, you know, you're, you're out playing, say, like when we were in Finland or Denver or just last year in BC, there's different tribes that accept us and, and that – that aren't hunted to show hunted to show and they want to, you know, embrace us and, and kind of, they have our support 100%, which is, which is amazing. And that's the thing that I've come to realize, you know, the, when we put on that Jersey um, for me, you know, I, I feel like I'm representing more than, than just my people. It, it's, it's more of all indigenous people across Turtle Island to me because of, of the support I felt and, when you see that as a player, you, uh, you, you, you kind of realize it's much more than lacrosse, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's way bigger than that because we've been a part of, of some ceremonies and, you know, it was life changing for me. Um, and it's something I'll never forget. And so I think that's the cool part that I like to, to see is that, you know, we're not just representing us and learning other cultures along the way is, is something special. Yeah, and it's not just, you know, the indigenous people of North America, it's, it's indigenous people all over the world. You know, I think being a part of the Iroquois Nationals, we've seen that with, you know, we've had demonstrations from New Zealand, people from New Zealand, indigenous people from New Zealand, Peru, you know, Africa, everyone wants to share their culture with us. And that's, you know, those are things that, you know, I'll remember from our time with the Iroquois Nationals is those cultural exchanges uh, in learning, you know, different cultures around the world. You know, I, don't, I won't really remember, you know, the game so much. Obviously, there's some that are awesome, but, you know, those are the biggest things. And like Randy said, that's where you, you realize it's, it's much bigger than lacrosse, and you see that with those exchanges. Yeah. It's pretty incredible, you know, this strong sense of Native pride around – this game whether you play it or not i mean just being a fan just seeing that you know you know it represents native people but you know for 
for some of the you know younger people that listen to this podcast, um, can you give them a sense of what what does it take to be part of a nationals lacrosse team? Like what's involved? How much you know practice time and travel and you know like what's required to be on such a huge team? I think it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of a lot of sacrifice and you know those are the biggest things. Uh, a lot of us live, you know, all over North America. So it's, it's kind of difficult to get together for practice. So, you know, mainly it's on your commitment and what you want to get out of it. So most of all, you know, you're, you're working by yourself, you're doing things to get better, but you know, and just kind of keeping in contact with, with your teammates. I, um, for us, we're, we're much different than, you know, a Canada or us, you know, we all, we all come from the same background and I think that's a, what makes us special and, you know, that's, that's what, you know, it kind of takes and yeah. For, for me, I think when we grow, when we were growing up, I mean, for myself, I, I can only speak for myself. I, I had my stick in my hands a lot uh, every day after school, sometimes before school and playing with my brother or cousins or, or friends, you know, and then you're not even really focusing on, anything you know you're, you're kind of just out there playing because you, you love it and, and it becomes uh it becomes a, a passion and then that passion you, you create dreams and, and some of those dreams are to go to school get an education go play pro play for the Iroquois Nationals and and then once you 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 start achieving those goals I think it snowball effects especially for me you gain some confidence with you within yourself and um that that passion and love becomes more and more and more. And, and I think for me, the, 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 the more I played and the more I, I, I got to um, achieve some things that I, I wanted to do it, 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 you know, it was, it was an amazing feeling and it, it really started in the backyard, just messing around and, and playing, you know, fun, fun. <laughs> I think um, lacrosse, like I mentioned earlier, lacrosse, the important tool to lacrosse is the lacrosse stick. Um, I say that because, um, like Randy said, you, you don't put that stick down. You, you, became, you become so obsessed. You become so, it, becomes, it becomes like your best friend. It almost um, seems like you, um, you, know, you sleep with it. You put it near your bed. You do all these things with it. You want to take it everywhere. And it becomes an obsession with love, compassion, and all these things. And you just become so connected. And, and I think that's the, the, the power behind sports, I can say. I can make this more broader. But to be more specific, the game of lacrosse, it has that, that spirit behind it. And that those, those ancestors that have played it you know, before us, um, I think it's just all about that energy that's kind of um, and where it comes from and how we're kind of drawn to it and how people, you know, become, you know, so infatuated about the game of lacrosse. But in the end, I kind of find that it's all about, you know, through hard work, um, sacrificing, and um, just having fun with it, I think is the most important key to it and have, just having a balance in life, just continue to willing to want to be learned, be an open ear. I know one thing that I remember I, I realized um, when I was younger was I always felt like, or just from what I remember, I felt like being, I was the kid that was always wanted to be next to my dad. And I always kind of wanted to grow up as I like, it's almost like I imagined myself as my, my father and all the people that were around him because I looked up to them. And I think that's the thing that's, um, that it's important to be, um, you know, a, a role model and to set a good example, because for me, that was, was my, who the people I looked up to and I thought was cool. Like I would just, I would want to be in the locker rooms, you know, want to be on a bench, but obviously it just became, like I said, it just becomes so hard where like you want to do everything that you're, whoever that person is for you in the, this game of lacrosse. It's just, um, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's also, I think you get the picture of how, how, um, how important it is to us and how in fact, you know, we, how much in love we become with this game and with, with the stick specifically because we don't let it down. And that's kind of what got me to where I am today. And um, yeah, so. It's funny you say that because, you know, like my dad plays in old timers. Well, used to, he doesn't play anymore. And like you go out there and you see them, you know, playing and, and it's not for real, you know, they're just out there having fun. And, 
you know, getting in the locker room and, and ha- hanging out with them, like, that's cool. Or even, you know, for me when I was younger, being a ball boy for the Arrows, like, I was a ball boy when Jeremy was on the team. You know, so like that's how much like when you're a kid, like you you love the game so much, you you want to be around it and, and and kind of be a part of it. And I think like he's talking about like those role models that are are put in your life. For me, you know, you look up to that and and you want to try to aspire and and get there. Yeah, but yeah, it's funny. That's awesome. I mean, just just to know that it's also very much tied to family and, you know, memories that you have as a kid and seeing your family playing and things like that. And, you know, for me, you know, I've been following um, the Iroquois nationals and, you know, I always see the strong symbolism, you know, you've got the dark purple and the white, you know, you think of the wampum belts from, you know, the Iroquois and, you know, the whole history behind it. But I recently noticed on Twitter that the colors have changed from purple and white to green. And I'm wondering if you can talk about what's going on there. Yeah, so um, Team Ireland has recently decided to step away from the World Games happening in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, They gave up their spot so that we could be a part of the games. And that was, you know, a couple days ago. And that's something was a pretty crazy thing for us. You know, we, we want everyone to be able to play the game. We never expected anyone to, you know, drop out for us. But, uh, you know, and I think it just speaks to the friendship that we've made with, you know, the Irish people. I think it goes back to the Irish famine when the Navajo Nation donated, I think it was like $180 to help support them. And then recently during COVID, the Irish repaid, the Navajo Nation by donating, I think it was 1.8 million to, you know, help fight COVID. And, you know, this is just another step in the friendship. Um, and, you know, it's a tremendous honor. And for them to do that speaks a lot to their character. And, you know, it shows how great of people they are. And, you know, it's just been an awesome feeling. So uh, can one of you explain why did the why did Ireland have to do that in the first place? Why weren't you a part of the World Games that were going to be happening in Birmingham? Uh, Randy, do you want me? To? Yeah, yeah, I'll take. I uh, well, um, okay. So the World across, you know, we we're supposed to uh, qualify in 2018 for a position in the 2020 world games. Um, and the criteria was that you had to place in the top eight teams and, and we came third place. And so, you know, that's as far as the criteria went uh, on paper. And, um, they didn't really say, uh, what, like what, the really issue was with it they they said that the olympic committee had a different set of rules and then the ioc had or um there was a bunch of just like going back and forth on, on pointing the finger a little bit and and then recently um the world games created uh, a a new criteria um trying to allow us back in the uh a, a, a game the games which is still unknown a little bit but um, it, it was just a little fishy, you know, uh, with everything. And I think now we're on the right track. I, I know, like Bomber said, you know, that shows a lot, a lot to Ireland's character on, on doing that. You know, that's a, that's a big step and, and for, for their athletes and their program to do that. So, um, yeah, that was kind of what happened with that. And, you know, uh, I, I don't really – you got anything to add on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think just to add on to, um, I think this just goes to add on to kind of what Randy said. Um, I think it just boils down to doing the right thing. And I think a lot of people, this, I think this really, where I want to go with this is, is everything that we fight for as Indigenous people, not just on Turtle Island, but just the world. It's, and it really boils down to this systemic system that we all live in. And to me, I, I feel like it's important to bring this up because um, it's kind of like how I mentioned in the beginning, how everything's intertwined, how everything kind of like um, affects 
something else down the road. And I think really what this kind of boils down to is, you know, basically, you know, the whole passport issue, um, honoring our rights. And, and obviously, um, you know, that with our history with the United States and, and so forth with European first contact, um, like I said, I don't want to get into it too much because mm. I, I only know a small bit about it. But to me, it's something that I feel I want to kind of just, you know, briefly kind of speak on it and to kind of just speak what I do know. And, and, and to me, I think it kind of boils down to this, this domination of, um, of this, this system that we live in and feel like someone's superior than another and that they can feel like they can just make rules up as they go and it not be, not consider this group when it comes down to not, being all inclusive and um so to me um yeah that's that, that's it in a nutshell for me again i don't mm. want to speak too much on it but again mm. i um i felt like that had to be voiced you know so if you if you look at the history too right we got like native peoples got their got our culture ripped away from us basically you know um which wasn't by our choice and getting put on reservations was not also our choice, you know, and, and to still see this system, systemic um, racism still happening, you know, it wasn't our choice not to be included in that too. So it, it's pretty, pretty, I don't know what it's, it's just disrupting to, to see that it's still kind of continuing, but hopefully. Yeah, can... bottom, oh. bottom line is I feel like I, bottom line is I'm just happy it, it holds, like you said, it gives us hope that the the Irish, you know, uh, done the right thing. They, they had it in their heart to do the right thing. And that's be called being in your truth and, and, and speaking the truth and putting that by action. And to me, that that's like like Randy and Bomber said, that's, it's, it shows about what their character is all about. And to me, that's um, where we need to hit as far as, um, you know, peoples, as far as religions, cultures to come together and to share share and prosper and to grow and whatever that may be you know what i mean so mm -hmm. I, I also think it speaks really well to the Haudenosaunee um, and your characteristics. I mean, traditionally, you were, you know, known as warriors, but also known as really strategic negotiators and diplomats and relationship builders. And, you know, the focus being on um, the great law of peace and, and forming good relationships. And, you know, your team has always had an awesome reputation for building these relationships and you know when I saw the color change to green in honor of you know Ireland making this um, sacrifice uh, I started following them and I noticed that they were all saying that the it wasn't even a question that the decision was unanimous and that they would wouldn't even think twice about giving up their spot for the Iroquois Nationals because, because they wouldn't even have the game were it not for the Iroquois and that they have just this high respect for the culture and the game itself and for you as a team. And I think that really speaks well to all of you as a team and the relationships that you've built all around the world. I mean, it's pretty incredible. Absolutely. I think it just speaks to what our people were all about as far as, you know, before there was European contact, you know, we, we, we invited those people in uh, when they first had come to the shores uh, on the Eastern shore. Um, obviously when you read throughout history, um, that's what our people were all about. We we're all about, we had that heart and caring and compassion for, for a human soul, for, you know, people that walked about and that needed a place, needed food, a place to stay. We would welcome them in and and um nurture them and help them whatever the case may be and obviously you could see where that kind of led to with with uh colonialism and to how it kind of is a major factor into everything it, it lives within everything from what i can what i'm coming to learn and that but also you have people out there that do have that good sense of heart in them because i feel like it's not different cultures, different races they 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 all they out we have indigenous people that that are from many different cultures and they, like I said, I'm not speaking to all people, but like, I'm just speaking to that system that people mm -hmm. that are part of that system of domination, um, are, are, it's the stuff that we need to get rid of. But it, to what we're speaking about, I feel like, you know, the act on, the, um, with the, uh, the Irish, um, Ireland, um, like I said, it speaks, it speaks volumes and it, it like you said, it's, we can't think enough 
thank them enough for um for their actions and i can only look that the future is bright in that spot so yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's something that we're all really celebrating because, you know, we saw the build up to it um, about, you know, how do we support, how do we get you to these world games? And, and now that it's happening, like what happens next? What do you have to do? Do you have like increased numbers of practices? Like what's the next steps to prepare for those world games? Uh, we'll have to see once the COVID restrictions, um, you know, lift, um, uh... You know, there's a lot of us that are on the side of the border. Um, so to to get together, it would require, you know, you know, maybe if it's if it's in Onondaga that most people have to travel across the border. But when they come back, it's a 14 day quarantine. So I think that's something we'll probably look at. Maybe I'm assuming we'll get together again next summer. But like I said before, it's mostly on yourself to kind of commit to that. And you're, you're, you're by yourself for the most part and kind of you know, getting ready for those games because the, these games happen every four years. So you, we can't really, we're not together all that much, maybe four times, uh, you know, before the, the year leading up. But once the year hits and where we start preparing, we get together a lot more. So I'm assuming next, you know, next summer, 2021, we'll be getting together a decent amount to, uh, you know, get ready for those games. Awesome. So, before I let you guys go, um, you know, you have so many fans. What can we all do to help support you and your team between now and then? I think for me, it, you know, I never realized how, how powerful social media is. And I was always kind of timid to, to speak my mind and, and, and put myself out there, I guess. And I think just having having support on that front and making people aware of, of facts and, and the truth of, of what what we deal with as people and um, I think that's very important to me and one big thing that um, will help us um, continue to jump over these hurdles yeah I think um I think just to add on to that I think the Erica Nationals has taken um, a, a step for the better as far as an organization. So I would definitely stay tuned to anything as far as if it comes to financials. But I think, I think just like Randy said, um, um, as far as the social media, social media has been such a huge um, um, mover for um, lots of people throughout the world. And it's been huge for us and we're learning more and more about it. But as far as an organization, I would just stay more tuned because we're kind of mm -hmm. elevating ourselves as far as, you know, having a players committee and, um, just kind of, just kind of um, helping each other out as far as the Iroquois Nationals board and the players community, just trying to evolve and to just try to um, make things better on all fronts as far as like, you know, where we need to be in the future to prepare for the next games or whether if it's, um, you know, uh, fundraising or whatever the case may be, um, I would stay tuned to the, uh, our social medias on the um, on Iroquois Nationals page. Yeah, and I think uh, another thing is to, you know, have those conversations with people that might not know, you know, kind of educate them and, you know, help them understand. I know there's still people out there that really don't understand, you know, why we, you know, why it was such a big deal for us to get in and, you know, for us to be a part of that. And I think there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they, they can help with the conversation, um, I think. Like I said before, and I've, I've still seen comments on, you know, social media saying, you know, why, like, you know, why is it such a big deal that they're there? I think just having those conversations, the more people that we can educate, the better. And that's going to be, you know, the best thing going forward. Well, definitely. And, I, and I'm glad that it's good news. I'm glad that, it, you know, that you're all going and we all need some good news, especially, um, you know, during this pandemic and you know, now and to all of you for taking the time to help educate the rest of us on, you know, not just the game itself, but its importance to your culture and what it means and, you know, how significant that this sacrifice is um, from Ireland. And I know we have lots of exciting things coming up. We're going to be stay tuned to your social media. Um, we're huge fans. We're all rooting for you. And I'll make sure like for the listeners that I'll post links to the Iroquois Nationals website. And you also have, I believe you have a donation page where we can help uh, support the team. And I'll post that link there. And to all the listeners, 
um, please share this podcast. Please talk to people about this. Use your influence, use your connections, um, use social media to help educate people and push to make sure that these aren't ever issues again and that we're always supporting our Native peoples in all of their endeavors. Um, thank you so much for taking all of this time right now, especially such a busy time to help educate us. Um, this is really what it means um, to be warriors, to be nations, to live our, you know, uh, live out our sovereignty and our cultures. I really appreciate it. And good luck for you moving forward. We're going to be following you, all of you. Yeah. Yeah, now for having us. Yeah, no, thank you. And, um, Nyawa for uh, choosing us. <laughs> <laughs>